Greetings, friends. Welcome to the Pin Tool Podcast. My name is Al Wayman, owner of Creek Road Pottery in Laceyville, Pennsylvania, next to the cold Tuscarora Creek. Pull up a chair around the wheel as we discuss topics concerning the art and craft of pottery, good books, storytelling, marketing, and creating work that matters for folks who care. Greetings, friends. It's me, Al Wayman, and it has been a long time. And I have been very busy, so I wanted to go over a few things that I've been doing and fill everyone in on what I've been up to. So the past couple months, I've been throwing pots like no tomorrow because I have the big fall shows coming up. And I am proud to say I feel like I'm ahead of things this year and things are moving along quite nicely. I was able to make a trip to New York State, uh, upstate New York, uh, with my father, and we found a treadle wheel. So that has been a real interesting process to learn, and it's been very enjoyable, and it adds a whole new uh, dimension to the work, and it was, and it was amazing. The, the people who sold it to me uh, were really nice folks and my dad helped me tip it on the trunk the thing's a beast and there's nothing that's going to hurt that we've been getting rain so that's good the Tuscarora Creek is finally up to its normal levels and we got some pretty good vegetables and food from the garden that we were growing we're able to make some nice soups And uh, we ate some carrots and onions and beets and spinach and lettuce and some other things we had in there. It was just all around good. So, in prep for the pumpkin trail show that's coming up here local in Laceyville, Pennsylvania and the surrounding areas of Auburn and Silvera, um, there are, I think, maybe 20 businesses involved with the pumpkin trail and people travel for three days and go to these businesses and visit each and each place has its own raffles and you get a stamp and then if you visit all the places you can win the big prize so everybody's gearing up for that that's usually a fairly decent show for me in the area and and others and it gives a chance for people to shop and support local which since COVID has been um, one of the main pushes that people have been interested in is buying more close to home and more local. So that that is coming on October 14th, 15th, and 16th, 16th, um, 9 to 5, each of those days. And I still need to fire out the pots. I have them all made. I did some baking dishes and some pie plates, a whole bunch of bowls and mugs as fillers, and then some large mixing bowls. I was hoping to get some covered dishes, but they may need to wait until the Christmas show, which is Black Friday weekend, the weekend after Thanksgiving. So those are two shows that are almost close together that I need to fill up the building with pots. So that's always kind of nice. But at the same time, a little bit stressful, but it's a good kind of stress to have. Um, Another thing, uh, I was selected to do an exhibit of uh, teacups with a young student artist at the Slanted Art Gallery in Montrose. And I always enjoy supporting and helping young artists and uh, newer people who might be into the arts uh, to kind of promote those kinds of things, to get them excited about what they're doing. And even if nobody comes to this show, it's going to be pretty amazing. And I'm going to have a lot of fun uh, posting work and getting to know the other artists. Uh, She's a painter. Her mom's a painter. And so it's it's pretty exciting and I'm looking forward to it. So I have about 20 teacups to make and I think I'm going to make them in maybe um, Japanese style or 
maybe American uh, Japanese style, maybe the style that um, Bernard Leach or uh, Warren McKenzie kind of looking things. Because now I have the the tread wheel, the treadle wheel. Uh, I'm able to maybe turn out some of those forms that are kind of rustic, everyday use that Bernard Leach and um, Warren McKenzie uh, wrote about and talked about in some of their books. And the type of pots that you learn something about uh, each day that you use them, you find something new. It's like rereading an old book. So that's going to be exciting, and I'm hoping to get, like I said, 20 pieces out for that from the gas kilns. Um, had gas come today. I bought about 200 gallons, and so that was some cost there. I was able to fill them all for, uh, I think it was 375, and um, so I kind of got a deal, I think, and then, um, but that's all taken care of, and so I'm ready to go with that. So all next week and this weekend, I'll be firing the work out the prep for those shows that are up and coming. And then right after that, uh, I have a auction at the gallery where they're doing fundraising and, um, I'm putting in a few pieces and anything over the cost of those pieces will be given to the gallery. So I'm trying to think about sustainability and, um, food processing and kind of home things that people are going to be doing this winter due to food costs rising. Maybe people be baking bread and maybe people be fermenting. Maybe people need containers. So I, I'm hoping to do some fermentation crocs and some containers uh, for that um, raffle fundraiser that they're doing at the Slanted Art Gallery in Montrose. Uh, I think it's the second week of November. So that's what I've been doing here at the pottery. I ended up getting about 400 pounds of clay, and I'm, I'm through that all but 50 pounds. So I've been putting out the work, and uh, I know some do more than that, far more than that. But um, I hold a, another job at the paper factory, and I've been doing overtime there. I just had vacation last week, so I was able to get all the throwing done while I was on vacation. And so that'll be a nice, nice paycheck with the overtime days with the vacation right in with that. Um, so definitely uh, that overtime will pay for the gas and give me money up front. So with the candles, uh, I have about 20 candle cups. That I hope to have for the show at the pumpkin trail here at the pottery and um, so they were delivered and they're being filled so hopefully um, I think it takes two to three weeks to get back um, my candle lady she does a great job at, at filling and doing all of the wood wicks and I very much appreciate that and uh, she works really hard getting stuff in and um we have a really fun time making the candles. So I'm hoping that people do come out and support local, even though the economy is kind of bad. Um, I, I don't expect to do a whole lot, and I always see it that if I sell at least one pot, it's, it, it's successful for me. And um, nobody owes me anything, and um, no matter how hard I work, um, I don't think anybody owes me anything. Um, I just make the pots and hopefully find the right people to enjoy those pots, to take them home and adopt them and to use them rather than have them sit in a china cabinet. So if you own any type of Creek Road pottery pot, I would hope that it's in your dish drainer being used. I would hope that maybe the rims chip a little bit. I would hope that you bake with it because, like I said, it's like... It's like reading a book for a second time. As you use it, you get to know it, and you discover new things about it. And best of all, it's handmade. 
and there's nothing like it out there. So today, uh, we're going to be talking about a few topics of creating work on the treadle wheel. So we'll go down to the studio and we'll have a discussion about the treadle wheel and making work on it, getting used to it. So meet me down at the studio and gather around and uh, we'll have a nice conversation. Okay, everyone, pull up a chair around the wheel and we'll get started. I'll first go over how I found the treadle wheel. And while we're tossing some pots, maybe I'll talk a little bit about learning to throw on it because it definitely was different than electric. And it was amazing. So I was online and I seen the uh, video by the Potter's Journal, uh, that show on YouTube, where the artist had a treadle wheel. And I thought, oh, this is great. I need to get one at some point. And I wasn't even looking, uh, per se, because I, I had to do a lot of other things. I had to get ready for this, for the fall shows coming up. So I wasn't even looking for a treadle wheel. Then, of course, Facebook starts showing me nothing but treadle wheels. And I came upon the treadle wheel from upstate New York for 100 bucks, And it looked like it was in great shape. Um, there was not a whole lot of rust on it. Um, it looked like uh, everything moved. And uh, so I contacted the person and made arrangements uh, to go up and pick it up. So I don't own a truck. So my my dad uh, has a truck, so I borrowed the truck off him. And he had the day off work, so he decided to go and help me. And I always enjoy family helping me out because the, the pottery, uh, I always seen it as a family thing, and, and I always tried to include them. My mom has been here for a lot of the shows and has been my greeter which is a lot of fun she's she's getting older so so i'm not sure how much longer she'll be able to do that but as long as she can i try and have her do that and so dad went with me he enjoyed seeing the the farmland and taking the ride he's a he used to do farming back in the day milk cows for my uncle and work farms when he was younger and uh, so he enjoyed looking at the crops and the land and the farms and the fields and the farm equipment. And this route led us through farmland all the way to the destination where the wheel was. So by the time we got there, uh, it was raining and we got it out from behind the shed and we put it on a little cart and we wheeled it up on and slid it onto the truck. And we had a nice chat with the kind folks who sold us the wheel. And the lady who sold us the wheel uh, decided to be a painter. Uh, she had the wheel in her apartment. She said she just didn't want to deal with uh, pottery anymore. So she even gave me a box of clay. And uh, so that was very kind. So I loaded everything up and we made the trip back. It was probably about two hours out and two hours back. Uh, we stopped to eat, had a nice time, and then when we got here, uh, we were able to unload it and spin it, and um, all the bearings worked fine. I just needed to pump in some new grease, and, and Dad, he inspected the Zerk fittings where the grease goes in, and uh, we were just making sure things weren't bound up. We had to connect the um, the treadle, uh, the metal part that you push with your foot uh, to the uh, to the drive shaft, so it would uh, pivot back and forth correctly. So after all that was loosened up and oiled, and the moving parts were greased, um, I decided to try it out. So the next day, uh, I decided to start small um, because I didn't want to go right in pushing five, six pounds, 
uh, I had to get used to the um, speed variations and the inconsistencies of using a treadle wheel and also learning how to be more consistent on the treadle wheel. So I, I kneaded up probably about maybe 10 balls of clay of one pounders and um, I threw my first pots on the treadle wheel. And friends, let me tell you, they were not beautiful pots. They were like, I don't know, they were like beginner pots. They were bottom heavies, they were wobble tops, and I could see that it was not going very well. But the kind of thing with pottery, you learn, I think, from doing the many rather than perfecting the few. So I kind of pushed through that dip and <laughs> I figured that it would take me a hundred to get there. And with that kind of view, it helps you just to keep going. So no matter what I got, I just kept going and I knew I was going for a hundred. So by 20, they started looking like something I could keep actually. Even though there were people who contacted me and said, hey, I want your first treadle wheel pot. So I'm going to gift them that. <laughs> I would never, I would never uh, make them pay for that. But, so I got through the first 20 and um, they looked all wobbly and pot number 20 looked semi like a halfway decent mug I could actually put a handle on. So... I kept going and I decided uh, to throw maybe a wear board of 18 mugs uh, for practice to handle for the show. And then by 35, 40, things started looking much better. And by mug 50, um, I was able to turn out some really nice halfway decent forms that would be passable, well, in my my view of it anyways passable uh for mugs and um so i think it was around uh pot 60 or 70 after making the mugs i made a few bowls and then i went to try five pounders i knew if i could throw five pounders um i could throw a little bit above that i had soft clay and um, it seemed that with the treadle wheel and you needed, you know, soft clay, plenty of lubrication and water, even though some potters, depending on their clay bodies, may not use as much water, but mine seems to take quite a bit of water to stay lubricated. I even um, sometimes let it run down to slip in the old slop pail um, when lubricating because it seems that like that, that slip ends up being a better lubrication than water itself. And uh, there is a really great video Simon Leach uh, talks about uh, using kind of like slip water rather than straight water as it lubricates for a longer period of time. So I tried that and it, and it worked great. And also um, the throwing technique for the larger forms, the five pounders, uh, was a little bit different than on an electric wheel. Um, I found that in order to center it, I held, rather than holding two hands even and squeezing in and pulling up, to cone it up uh, with your palms, um, I had one uh, palm on my left hand higher than the right and kept it that way. And it seemed to center fine. Where on electric, I would do them evenly and kind of pull towards myself. Um, so that was one change that I had to do. And also the slower speed. Uh, usually you get the wheel going pretty good on electric to be able to center. But this was like a nice, easy pace, letting the clay do the work. And that's what I also understood about the treadle wheel is you let the clay do the work and you should not try to fight it because you'll just get tired out. So I let the clay do the work on the compression and just put a little bit of weight on it, bringing it down to, to compress and get the air bubbles out to get the, the clay centered. And then um, just slowly worked it up at a nice even speed. And I threw my first bowl um, 
it looked like a bull. Uh, I had to get used to uh, once I reached the rim to push it in a bit because it was far different than electric. It wasn't like uh, a medium slowness. It was more like the speed variations slowed faster. So all of that would show up in the in the in the clay in the throwing process which which was amazing to me and uh, any little movement of my hand being on study show, showed up electric it, it spins a bit faster and a bit more evenly so you can work out all those issues and have everything even out at the top to where you won't get wobble rims and uh, it was very challenging to not get a wobble rim and it was also challenging to be okay with getting a wobble rim because it added this whole other interesting element to the look and the clay and the freshness and the form looked more like a gesture a gesture rather than an implied form if that makes any sense like a like a gesture so I've been making quite a few gesture pots. I was able to throw, I think, eight um, six-pound bowls uh, for the show on, on the treadle wheel. And I was able to throw, I think, 20 um, casserole dishes slash pie plates. I think I threw 10 casserole dishes round casserole dishes with built-in handles, and then um, another 10 pie plates for the show. So, uh, over half the pots were thrown on the treadle wheel for the fall show, and I feel pretty good about that. Trimming on the treadle wheel is amazing. Um, it goes much slower. I don't need to worry about stuff jerking around. Um, it seems like I'm able to stop it easier. I'm not reaching for a switch. I'm not looking for a pedal. I'm just, you know, putting my foot on the flywheel. It's a 125 pound flywheel on this. I just let it slide to, to an easy stop. And um, you can do finer details with it without having to mess around with adjusting the even speed that you would get from the electric. Another thing that was a big change, it did cut my production time right in half, friends. It was crazy. I am able to throw comfortably um, with a little bit of fiddling um, about 18 mugs an hour. And when I got done treadling pot like 50 or 60, I decided to time myself. So I did up about 20 clay balls. Um, 20 clay lumps to see how efficient I could be throwing to a gauge on the treadle wheel and it cut my time <laughs> right in half being on the treadle wheel it's so much slower I I think I only threw nine or ten that hour and um, but it's far more relaxing like I call I told my wife I was like oh this is great it's it's like that movement with your leg. It's it's like my adult, my adult fidget spinner. That's what I called my treadle wheel. So eventually, I think what I'd like to do is maybe get a Bernard Leach style treadle wheel. Um, Simon Leach sells them down in Milheim, Pennsylvania, and that's probably like three hours from where I'm at. And I think if I save up to get a leech style treadle wheel and use it here at the Potter, I think it'll just be amazing for, for me to use and, and also for students to see and use if, if they come eventually and do classes, which is something that I'm looking forward to. So having this treadle wheel totally takes me off the grid now. I still need um, propane gas for the kilns, but um, I can make pots when I don't have electric, and uh, that's that's pretty amazing to me. I always wanted to get to that point um, 
to be able to make pots without electric. And realizing that some of the old time potters that used the kick wheels and the treadle wheels had this certain look to their work that was more um, handmade feel, I think. It's, it's kind of hard to explain. More, more intimate and more homey kind of feel um, and a lot more delicate than the electric. I'm not putting down electric. Uh, I used electric until now and I have been fine with it. But being on the treadle wheel in old time fashion was sure a nice thing. And reading books uh, by uh, Bernard Leach, um, a potter's book, I, I got that last month and I started reading it. Uh, it, was, it was great. And then um, I read a book, I was talking earlier about Warren McKenzie. Uh, he trained with Bernard Leach and ended up bringing back uh, the Leach style treadle wheel from Europe to America and used it here when he threw. So that was amazing. And just reading those books about the treadle wheels, seeing the work that came off them and understanding a little bit about its history and artists that used them and what they had to say about them and Warren McKenzie's philosophy on how he thought about the pots, how he sold his work, he wanted it to be uh, used in the home every day. He didn't care for much about seeing pots in the museum. He'd rather see them in somebody's house. And he really enjoyed seeing the um, intricate um, parts to the pot over a long period of time and discovering new things about them. So. That's where I'm at right now, friends, and um, hopefully I can get through the next few shows and take a little break and then start prepping for the spring show. Um, I expect it to be a little bit slow this year, so maybe I'll have some extra inventory. I've gotten some requests to do uh, some custom orders, and um, so that'll carry me a little while to get more clay, but I made it through that 400 pounds. I need another 400 to get ready for the Christmas shows and uh, the early spring. So we'll see how it goes. And uh, it's been getting colder. I hope to put on the wood stove soon downstairs. And that has been my uh, source for getting pots dry. Uh, I'm kind of a guy, if I need to create a lot of work in a short amount of time. I know this treadle wheel slows me down a bit, but I just need to throw more often. And I do that on my days off when I'm not working at the paper factory. So that's why I have to rush a bit more maybe than some folks who had more time. Um, but the wood stove in the basement has been great near the studio and it dries everything beautifully. And as long as I put bottoms up, things should work fine. So that's the account of the treadle wheel. And if you have not tried a treadle wheel, uh, I would suggest uh, giving it a spin. And don't only throw 10 pots on it, maybe do like 50 or 100. And I guarantee by pot 100, uh, you will find it as enjoyable as I do. So, be well, friends. Take care of yourselves and each other, and have a great day.